Oh, hello there. Startled me a little bit. Just working on a few uh, finishing touches. Whoa, to my latest invention here. Just give me a second. Zoom in on the coordinates. Bang. All right, looks like it should be ready to test out. Really only one way to see if this is working. A little nervous about it, but I'm just gonna reach out and put my hands on the portal. This wasn't supposed to happen. Where in the world am I? How did my clothes change? Where's my office? Um, what's going on here? Hello? Anybody? I sure hope this is working now. I was trying to go back to the time of Christ, but it doesn't look like my time machine wants to do that. So I don't know. Uh, I'm going to keep working on it though. Uh, but in the meantime, while I'm working on it, let me share some of the stuff that I've learned in my research. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. Joseph and Mary had to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. A trip of anywhere from 65 to 120 miles, depending on the route taken. Traveling in a straight line, it's around 65 miles. However, it's extremely unlikely that they traveled in a straight line. Mountains and unfriendly people, plus the road wasn't perfectly straight. Traveling on roads tends to be faster, safer, and easier. For comparison, we have several vehicles, all of which are traveling from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Keep in mind that this is all calculated without any sleeping or potty breaks. Also Mary, being pregnant, couldn't travel as fast as usual. If I could just figure out where I was, or when I was, I could maybe figure out if Mary and Joseph had a donkey or not. Or if they traveled by themselves or in a caravan. But as it stands, I'm in the middle, or should I say, middle of a height of some random mountain. And I, uh, kind of wearing some weird robe thing that I've never worn before. All very disconcerting. Um, but yeah, if I could figure out where I was, or when I was, and could get myself to where I need to be and at the time I need to be, I could figure all these things out. But as it stands, your guess is as good as mine. I will tell you one thing though walking on these mountain trails for maybe a mile, maybe, my feet have blisters. I'm a scientist, I work in an office in my spare time I tinker on a time machine okay not used to this heat but I must say this rope thing is pretty cool and so it was that while they were there the days were accomplished that she should be delivered 
And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. So while in Bethlehem, Mary delivered her firstborn. The city was crowded, as I'm sure you can imagine. There were a lot of people there for the census. So many, in fact, that there wasn't any space for them to stay. It was the custom to open your house to strangers. But there were just so many people in the city of Bethlehem that there was absolutely no space left. The classic view of Joseph running around the night that they arrived in Bethlehem looking for some place for Mary to give birth is probably not really true. Cataluma, an inn, lodging place, an eating room, dining room. Used in the King James Version, it's translated as guest chamber twice and inn once. So Joseph looked, but he really couldn't find any place for him to stay. Until he found this. It's a stable. Okay, some place for animals to stay. But really, it's nothing to turn your nose at. Come on, let's take a look inside. When there was no other place to stay, I'm sure this was pretty inviting. Plus, it was private. Mary was going to be having a baby. When you're in that type of situation, privacy takes on a new level of importance. Plus, as you look around, you'll notice that it's dry. There's a roof on top of us, which is dirt, actually, because we're inside of a hill right now. You're protected from the elements. You know, this is much better than being out in the open in some field someplace. You know? You're safe inside a stable. Much safer than in a random field someplace. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. Angels are the messengers of God. We don't really know what they look like, though the Bible does give vague descriptions of some angels in a few spots. They are spiritual beings, so they can travel through physical objects and have the ability to appear in the likeness of humans. Angels don't marry and aren't born, so there are no baby angels. And so it was that the shepherds came and found Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus, just as the angels had said. Shepherds were looked down upon at the time of Christ. Being considered incompetent, they were denied civil rights. Buying wool, milk, or even a kid from a shepherd was forbidden because it could be stolen property. The Mizna, Judaism's written record of the oral law, refers to shepherds in belittling terms, at one point even saying nobody should feel obligated to rescue a shepherd who has fallen into a pit. I am really starting to think this time machine is just a terrible idea. I mean, seriously, a biker dude? What's the deal? Why? Just why? Nothing in the code says anything about adaptively changing people's clothing to circumstances, and I'm like five inches tall! In somebody's living room, I hope they don't walk in and step on me. <sighs> Tree towering miles above me. I mean, I'm as short as their nativity scene characters. This is terrible. <sighs> I really don't like this one bit. Hmm. 
Something's amiss here. Can't quite put my finger on it, though. Got the stable, Mary and Joseph, baby Jesus, the shepherds, the animals. Wait a minute. The Magi! The Magi shouldn't be here! The Magi didn't see baby Jesus until almost two years later. Here's how I know. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. Did you notice the difference in the words, babe and young child? Why would they be translated as such? Well, back in the 1600s, early 1600s, when the King James Version was translated, they were going from original texts, which in this case were in Greek. So to determine what's really meant by these scriptures, we need to go dig back into those manuscripts, look at the original Greek words, look at the translations to those Greek words, and then we can find out what the authors of these two books really meant when they used the words that they used, and we can get an idea of why the translators used the words that they used when they translated it. So let's go take a look at those Greek words right now. Brephos, an unborn child, embryo, a fetus, a newborn child, an infant, a babe. Used in the KJV, it's translated into babe five times, child once, infant once, and young child once. Pideon, a young child, a little boy, a little girl, infants, children, little ones, an infant of a male child just recently born, of a more advanced child, of a mature child, Used in the KJV, it's translated into child 25 times, little child 12 times, young child 10 times, and damsel 3 times. We can further deduce that the Magi saw the baby Jesus much later than the night he was born by looking at some additional texts in the book of Matthew. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Oh, hey guys. I just, uh, pushed those magi into the other point of the room. I figured, if they don't belong in the scene, why keep them here? It was harder than you might think. I mean, I'm only five inches tall. Those guys are as tall as I am, I'm trying to push these things. I'm not really sure what they were made out of. I kind of thought they were like plaster or clay, but being this small, it's really hard to tell. The texture and everything that I'm used to being almost six feet, just things don't, they don't compose the same, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, as I was pushing them, I noticed something a little odd. There was three of them, right? And you're, okay, so what? There was three magic. There was always three. Yeah, but why? The Bible never actually tells us how many magi there were. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down, and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. Baby Jesus. Wow. Well, I know what I'm giving him. I've got a time machine. That, it doesn't work right, but... Hey, he's Jesus. He can probably fix it for me. And I'll give him 20 bucks. Standard gift for a baby, 20 bucks. I mean... Okay. I give him the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh and... Oh, that's expensive. I don't have the money. I'm strapped for cash. My time machine uses megawatts of electricity every single day. I can barely pay the bills. I'd give more if I could, but I, I just can't. I don't have that kind of gadget. But, two gifts. Time machine, and 20 death. I just thought of something. I'm giving two gifts, right? Time machine and 20 bucks. The Magi gave three gifts. Gold, Frank, Sense, Myrrh. There could have just been one Magi who gave all three. Or two. And one of them gave two and one gave one. There could have been a half... There could have been a few thousand! And there were just only three gifts that were given, but massive quantities of those three. 
this sheds an entirely new light on the situation. There could have been millions! Okay, I'm probably getting a little carried away. But just because there were three gifts is no reason to think there were only three magi. White Christmas? That's... Yeah, that... The Bible doesn't say anything about a white Christmas. If I'm remembering my geography right... Bethlehem... Usually doesn't get a lot of snow. Maybe, like, one snowfall a year. What are the odds that it would have snowed when Jesus was born? Okay, I know. A lot of people like to look at the Romans as being these mean, nasty, cruel, evil guys. And sure, they probably were, but they weren't stupid. Okay, if you're gonna have a taxation where you're taxing people that hate you, that don't like that you're ruling over them, you're not gonna do it in the winter when weather's bad for traveling. Because there's gonna be a greater likelihood that there'll be more people who don't go and get registered for this taxation, which means less revenue for you, you're holding this taxation for a reason, because you want money. So you hold it at a time, even if it's not the most beneficial time for you. You say, these people hate us. They don't want to give us their money. If we hold this thing in the winter, there's fewer people that are going to travel, because the weather is bad. So we're going to hold it when the weather is nice for traveling, even though that might mean putting it off for six months. We're going to do this in the summer, where the weather's good, People aren't planting their crops, they're not harvesting their crops, they have nothing to do but wait for their crops to grow. And while they're waiting for their crops, they can go to their hometown, they can register for taxation, they can ta get taxed, we can get their money, and then they can go back and harvest their crops once it's fall. But we got the money. Yeah, we had to wait a little bit longer, but we got it. And that's what's important, because we want the money. The Romans weren't stupid. They had brains and they used them. They conquered most of the world. They weren't stupid. They were just mean and cruel and nasty. But hey, who isn't? Come on. The entire world of unsaves are mean, cruel, and nasty. That's what life is without Christ. I think we covered all the important topics. I am going to try, and really hope it works, to teleport back to my time machine and get to my lab. No idea how long that's going to take, but I'm hoping at some point to get there. Once I get back to my lab, I'm definitely going to eat something, because I am starving. This time machine doesn't take away your hunger, even though it magically changes your clothes. Designer who made this thing, what was he thinking? Anyways, grab a bite to eat, gotta shave, gotta shower. That's really about it. And then, yeah, work on this time machine, Mark. Try and get these bugs out of the system. Someplace there's got to be some malicious code somebody injected in some of my MySQL database attack or something. But I gotta fix that, and then we will be off to, um, yeah, the next part, which after his birth, of course, is gonna be his life. So, his life and ministry, that's what we're gonna be looking at next. As soon as I get this time machine back up in ship shape, and as soon as I get some food in my stomach, and like I said, shave and shower and all that fun stuff. So I will see you then, which for your, your case will only be a matter of seconds. <laughs> Me on the other hand, it could be a few weeks before I get this time machine functioning as it should. But as soon as it does, I will be back. And we will have some more fun, do some more gallivanting around, and we're going to learn a whole lot more in part two.